reading the book for economics about 10 years ago. I started uh, following JPAL's work through their website and their newsletters. In 2020, when JPAL launched the MENA, um, the Re MENA regional office in Cairo, I was absolutely thrilled. And even more so when they launched the JPAL um, MENA fellowship program in the last quarter of 2022. So since m many of my studies were in trade, I've come to know JPAL from its uh, studies, uh, especially on the expert dimension. So one of the studies was conducted in Egypt for, uh, for examining the effects on, on Egyptian uh, small firms uh, producing rugs. And they have uh, estimated the effects of allowing such firms to export on their profits and productivity. So actually I was a graduate student at the American University in Cairo where JPAL MENA office is located and I got introduced about the JPAL's activities at that time. I was truly excited that there will finally be a regional office whose existence is crucial for introducing scientific and rigorous approach to evaluating social programs in our region. Uh, I heard about the MENA Scholars Fellowship while I was attending a conference organized by UNICEF and Cairo University and one of the speakers there was the founding executive director of JPAL MENA and she announced an anticipated fellowship whose main focus is building skills and expertise in the area of uh, impact evaluation and conducting RCTs so I was truly excited to apply for it. I think it is an informed process of creating policies that uh, mainly includes exploring local contexts, collecting data of high quality, and assessing the cost in effectiveness of interventions before upscaling them and spending a lot of money on them. And I also believe that it implies that decisions couldn't be taken, specifically policy decisions couldn't be taken, unless there is strong scientific evidence on which they can be based. Evidence-based policy making means that we are ensuring that the most impactful and ideally cost-effective policies are being implemented and this is very important in a, in a world where resources are limited and where choices need to be made and obviously with choices there, there could be high opportunity costs. Digging more into real life situation, it's, it's not like the conventional research that I'm quite aware of that I use usually in my work. Um, it actually tackles areas that you cannot tackle when you are doing any uh, sort of research that you, you normally do as, a, as an academic or as a researcher. I think it's time for me to, to tackle uh, a different uh, area, uh, something that addresses poverty, which is all around us. Um, uh, I, I want to help policy uh, makers to, to, to see how the, the, all the plans or all the projects that are uh, actually taking place, how are they evaluated and how can we help as a researcher. So the fellowship will provide me with a unique opportunity to gain an in-depth understanding of the different impact evaluation methods and especially RCTs. This opportunity um, will help me a lot because it includes mentorship, it includes uh, uh, some capacity building sessions, uh, and um, it, it, it will give me a hands-on experience on how to conduct uh, RCTs in practice. The fight against poverty and increasing women's empowerment are two of the main causes that I would like for my career to serve. What inspires me to continue work, is, to continue in this work, is seeing the advancements in the methodologies used in development economics, and specifically the use of RCTs in evaluating development policies and programs, and, and, and understanding which are the policies and programs that work, and which are those that don't work. Uh, I think this goes back to when I was an undergraduate student, when I was specifically 19 years old, because at that point uh, I got introduced to JPAL's work. Uh, I attended some online lectures on the challenges of global poverty delivered by Professor Istra Duflo. And since then uh, I have developed strong interest in 
uh, learning more about the unique studies conducted by JPAL and uh, the design and implementation of RCTs. Well, it's quite important to have this uh, network of relation with our colleagues in MENA, especially that we, we all have, all, almost have the same concerns. So when we communicate, actually we, we share together um, a lot of ideas, uh, we communicate our findings, and this actually uh, in the future would help to create a, a common plan for the, the whole Arab area, MENA area in specific. The JPAL would allow us to uh, create a, um, a social network of researchers that are based in the region and this is important because each uh, res for researchers in the MENA region they would be the, the ones who are mostly aware about the, the needs of the, the region, about the most interesting research questions to discover and about also the implementation channels that our region in particular are facing.